Hey, and welcome to the show. This show is brought to you by Patreon members like you. Thank you for being a Patreon member. As a Patreon member, you get a video of the podcast that we put out twice a month. Now, on with the show. Oh. Okay, let me turn oh. Oh, let's do a little stretching. Oh, ow. Oh, cuz. It feels good. Dude, I what? had it. Hey, you look. Lunch. And then go. What did you have? The lunch. Oh, it's there. I don't like it. Aaron's is, Aaron, Aaron's. Aaron's is on. He sells furniture. Oh. <laughs> hey, we were just Hi. talking about Sue. Actually, we were just talking about Bill, not Sue. I'm joking. We were talking about, we were talking about you, Sue. Compressor, thank you. Ah, yes, yes, it's on. Dude, I can't find the light. Wow. All right, cool. Oh, boy. All right, all right. Welcome What's to going Monday. On, guys? Monday is the beginning of the week where the fun and excitement just, <laughs> ooh, it's like, what can we do? And, of course, today, like all other Mondays, sucks. Yep. Um, actually, today wasn't too bad. It was more on the personal side of things where the day starts to suck. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Um, why are those blinking today? Wow. It's Monday, man. Monday is bad. Is that good? What's up, Bismarck? But, anyways, so we got a fun show ahead South of Africa, today. Man. Look at that. Look at that. So, a couple things. Um, let me grab this. So, as we said, we're going to start giving away these polarity testers. Mm -hmm. And um, here's how I think this is going to go down. So, originally, uh, what we were planning on doing mm -hmm. was we were going to one a week we're going to divide it between the facebook and the youtubes yeah unfortunately youtube doesn't allow us to like like robert van hoy i can look in there and i can i can contact robert and i can say hey buddy you know what's going on and send him a message yeah can't really do that on youtube from the live show so what i think we're going to do is it's still going to be one a week but it's going to be this show either a comment now or a comment from the show rebroadcast tomorrow because we broadcast the show on Tuesday on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this, the rebroadcast Tuesday, if you leave a comment there, we're going to take the comments from both shows, we're going to pick one person, and we're going to send it away. Now, what that means for you guys that <laughs> actually watch this show and are really bored and watch it again tomorrow, yep. if you leave two comments, you have two chances because we might scroll past you on this and find you on that or vice versa. So that's what's going to happen. We've already got a winner from last week we've sent out, or we haven't sent out, where we've notified as, hey, guess what? You won one of these. Mm -hmm. We have a bunch of them, and we're going to be just continuously giving them away one a week until we hit 100,000, and then I don't know what it will do if, if we still have them left over. But um, we bought a bunch of them, and uh, so, yeah. So that's how we're going to do that. Hey, Lewis. So we'll randomly pick one yep. of you guys, either from oh. this show or uh, a comment on the next show, or, I mean, on Tuesday. Lunch Thursday and night. That way everyone gets a chance yeah. for someone to get picked. And there again, I don't care where you're at. Um, and it doesn't have to be like, I really want one of these. Just a comment. Yeah, yeah, you can tell comment, me the weather. Say, you can say what's hi. What's going on, guys? How I you really guys don't doing? care. Personally, I'm not a sob story guy, so don't give me a sob story. Um, but yeah, so if you're just asking a normal question, yeah, that's it. Yep. Yay, more um, work for Sue. Exactly. We're going to talk about it tonight. Yay, I'm going to tell you because you should be getting one soon. America, um, America. Uh, my Pioneer 1400 camera setting menu only shows two options. Why does it have a full list of options? Is something, something wrong, wrong with mine? My Why doesn't it have a full list of options? Uh, camera menu. Because there's really only two options. On yeah, and off. On and, and off. And that's it. And reverse or, you know, what you're triggering it with. Positive yeah. or negative. Yeah. That's it. That's all there is. Now, if you go into 41... No, so... A 4100 doesn't give you the option for front camera. That's on a 41, a 1440. Now, if you had a 1440, there'd be the front camera option. Yeah. But that's it. So mm -hmm. you're good. That's all it does. I see Stinger 1000s and 4000s. Yes, yes, you do. And that's that. Yep. Um, we're actually phasing out the green. It was one of those weak moments. I don't even know why I bought the 1000s. We never use them. But for some reason, I bought I them. So we only have like. I think we have some wide jacks left over. Yeah, yeah. Um, primarily, we use the 4,000s, yeah, so those yeah. are going to go bye-bye. 
Um, All right, so this no, Saturday, right. Sunday, yep. this uh, Sunday, 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 we are going to be uh, X Power Optima, X Power, uh, X Power, Optima under the hood, X Power oh, in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this Sunday we're gonna be at Amplified Auto Sports for a sound quality competition. That's with Iaska and Mecca. It is located here. There is the re-grand opening. Um, it starts at 10 p.m. 10 a.m. starts at 10 p.m. That'd be a party. Okay. It starts at 10 a.m. and goes to 4 p.m. We're gonna be there hanging out, doing some filming for a live for a show. We're not gonna do a live show. We're just gonna be hanging out, filming, <laughs> doing some good fun there. Yep. If you come out, you can meet us. We won't be giving away any swag because it's not our store and we don't want to kind of take away yeah, from exactly. that whole thing. Um, just go but you can come it. out and take pictures, say hi if you want to take pictures, or just say hi. Yep. Um, Haley will be there with us so you can see the other half of the boring life if you want to do that. And if you don't know what the boring life is, segue, okay. uh, you can check out the boring life of Dean and Haley on YouTube. It's the other channel we do where you get to see what I do on Sunday with Haley. Well, happy birthday, Josh. Sunday is my birthday. Well, there you go. A <laughs> uh, thousand thin. Um, thousand thin? Thousand no, thin. actually, you know, it's funny. If you really look at the cables, the 4,000 is probably a thinner cable What's up, than the Paul? Thousand, So it's just really what they're made out of. Bobby's in the house. Hey, Bobby. Hey, from Australia. What's, What's your opinion it? on Audiobond subs? Now, Audiobond used to make some really cool subs back in the day, yeah. and I'm assuming yeah. that's what you're talking about because the company really doesn't exist anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Um, right. And they were always neat. <clears throat> Uh, the flames. Ooh, you had a that set of my, audio bomb. That right? was my first car audio. Yeah. Audio bond. So I, you know, audio bond was cool because it was What's definitely that, Jason? hey one of those crossover <laughs> companies that was like it was right at the start of when things were like it was it was like a cheaper company, but it really wasn't too cheap of a company, and they were coming out. They were they were really really leveraging that ability to make cool looking stuff to sell things. So like up until then, everything was kind of like. Hey, it's a black heat sink. Did I mention my amp has a black heat sink? Did yeah. I mention my amp? Hey, my amp has a white heat sink. <laughs> and it was like, they were putting flames and meters and their baskets were really cool. And yeah, it wasn't was... just like, doop, woofer, yeah. Yeah. doop, woofer. Yeah. You know, so for me, that was one of the neat things about- And apparently about... they put the lo uh, something else. Apparently they put something <laughs> else. Hey, if you're an Audiobond fan or even a car audio fan- and read. Google audio bond owner and drug trafficking on wow. Google's and see what comes up. <laughs> it's pretty like wow. Oh, that's crazy. Um, okay, I'm still running a Stinger Bullet RCAs. Hey, uh, dude, let me it's tell you Detroit. what. Bullets, dude, tons of bullets and B. I, bullets? I, yeah, it's a it's a it's a series. We have um, a gunshot next to them. No, no, no. Shot. It was, oh, it was different the sting, stinger bullets. <laughs> um, hey, guys. Oh, what's up from what's Canada? What's up from Canada? Uh, good afternoon. Well, good evening. Yeah. Um, I have two Pioneers uh, 10s. Uh, should I use my Kenwood XR1000 or my PPI Ace? Oh, wow. Okay, so Z. so those are four. So it's two ohms. So that's going to give you the <laughs> maximum 1,000 watts out of those. That's a lot of power for those. I would probably think... So the 602 though, that's only gonna probably get you 150 watts. Yeah, it's so probably still more than enough. The thousand, if you're super careful, super careful, but you're probably only you're probably fine with the 600. That would be that would be that. It seems like Jason and Robert have become friends. Do um, GPS antennas? Do GPS navigation antennas go bad? Yes, they rust. If you have them on the outside of the car, <coughs> water gets into the seal and the whole inside will corrode. So they can go bad. I've seen plenty of GPS antennas where the people put them on the outside of the car and they have turned into solid just you pull the plastic and the, and the antennas fall out the other thing that typically goes bad on them is wherever they come into the car sometimes they can go bad there so yes they do go bad you're oh it's uh, doesn't uh, doesn't that uh, okay wait a minute what's Jeff saying what 600 doesn't at 4 ohm it's at or 2 uh, ohm it's 4 ohm well that's what I was saying if he ran at 4 ohm stereo then he could probably get the 150 watts out of that amp, maybe. I wouldn't mono that amplifier by any stretch. You'd go bad, bad things. And you can't do 2 ohm mono, so yeah. Oh, I was four ohm. Wow. But you can bridge it onto the um, onto the Kenwood because it's a single mono channel amp, so it's gonna it's not really bridged. You're just gonna hook it up, you're gonna have a two ohm load at the amplifier, and you're gonna get all the power out of it. So yeah, go. 
Um, all right, I remember Audubon. The ramps came with okay. the white gloves. Yeah, because they were chrome, and chrome gets fingery. Yeah, that was I cool. have three. I have an 03 four door Explorer. Four What's a good set of loudspeakers and a four channel amp? So it's a five by seven. Yep. So I know Audio Peg makes loudspeakers, but if you want actual speaker speakers that are really cool, Rockford Power Series five by sevens are going to be the loudest five by sevens you're going to find. You can yeah. power that with a nice four channel amplifier. If you're trying to four, uh, the four hundred four Prime. If you're trying to be like on the cost effective. Point. Even even the 400 the PBR the, the new, PBR 404 would be PBR really nice because it's tiny. Yep. Is that this? Yep. It'll make me get it. Way to go! It'll make Bill happy. <laughs> um, uh, all right, let's see. Ask the next question. Look at this. Look at look. Will you look at this? Look 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 Can look you look, look, look at look, this. Look, look look. I was doing that yesterday, driving <laughs> Haley crazy. Look 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 look. Yes, I got it from Sound Man. I'm not gonna lie. Look look look. So, anyways, this is the PBR 404. This is a nice little four channel. This will power those exceptionally well because it's got plenty of sack. Um, so, ooh, also check these out. Look at these. Look at these. These are leather keychains. Uh, Butch, the guy who makes our stickers for us, one of his guys does has a laser, yeah. Yeah. which we don't have yet, and he made these for us. So these are cool. I was thinking that'd be cool on a hat, but um, yeah, yeah. so, but yeah, they're cool little cool little keychains. So I'm gonna see how much these are gonna cost me to make. Um, maybe we'll give some of those out at some point. All right, uh, I have a 1998 Silverado, and I'm Oh, kicker key, you'll guys. get a DSP. Oh, Good yeah, one, Robert. Yeah. Didn't you think that? Yeah. yeah. Kicker key. Kicker key, right there. Uh, okay, install the 4500. Oh man, I totally Ooh, lost that. Ooh, kicker key. Yeah, that'd be another good amp to run. <laughs> I'm like this. Yeah, 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 that's the remote. Uh, that special package will be in next week. Ooh, we can tell everyone what it is because I told them that means uh, the Odyssey Primo. Okay. Uh, all right, is coming. Horse is coming. What's the speaker? I totally lost it, man. <laughs> what the speaker would you recommend for this truck? Please help. Oh, wait, Silverado? Yes. Uh, it's a 98. It's a six and a half. That's a six and a half. Yeah. 98, uh, six and a half. So you could actually do, um, I mean, we're talking about Rockford, so Rockford's good. Uh, you have Pioneer in there. If you like Pioneer, the TSDs would be really nice. Um, if, ooh, the uh, seven inch up front would be cool. The Rockford seven, I'm sorry, the Kenwood Exelon XR8, uh, whatever, seven inch mm -hmm. Exelons. You can mm -hmm. put those up the front. something. You have to yeah. go with the six inch in the rear though. And I mean a six inch, so it's it's a smaller rear speaker, but the front one, you could you could probably get away with the seven inch. Um, it really just depends on what you want to do. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm assuming it's a 98, you're probably not gonna go crazy on it. Might wanna check out, personally, dollar value wise, the Kenwood Exelons, even though you have a Pioneer radio, it's okay, are really nice. Uh, you could also check out the kicker uh, either the what is it the KX yes or yes. the CS are also really nice. No, just, and, just and, KS. Well, I would do KS yeah, for KS, sure. KS, KS, yeah. What's up from Trinidad? What's up, man? What's going on? Hello, my um, friends from Philly. Uh, thanks, you guys are awesome. Can I buy the speakers and amp for me? If you're in the U.S., yes, you can give Paul a call at seven two seven. Ship it to you. Seven yep. two. What is the phone number? Two seven. one uh, seven two seven two one six six one seven zero. Yep. I never call it. I never call um, it. And, and even if I call right. it, wouldn't. All right. I have a 2016 Dodge running a JL HD on uh, 1200. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I was looking at Teddy's. So just get those made. I want one. Uh, I don't know. We got to get some prices on them. I'm kind of with sticker shock at first. Now I've anyway, already had enough sticker shock today. Eight inch stinger <laughs> zero gauge wire and my lights dim. So he's got a, a Durango, he's got a zero gauge wire, he's got a 1201. And the lights dim. And the lights dim. A lot. A lot. It's a 1201, it's got a big battery in the back. Yeah. So what I would recommend doing in that car is taking out the spare tire, sure. um, unless you absolutely have to have it, it's the AAA. Yep. And what we've done when we did big systems in those is we would put a big, big, like SPV 70, which now you could get away with the, uh, actually for, for the size of the SPV yeah. 70, you could get into the red top, which is like the smaller red okay. top stinger. Yeah. Put that in the trunk. With I'm just going to say, uh, it's a 2016 car. I don't know if you already changed your battery. Um, you might have to change yeah. your battery. Yeah, 16, if it's 2016, 18, I don't think you need them, but I mean, it's a 1200 watt amp though, and it, it's yeah. a, it's a Chrysler, so that's scary in itself, but I would think about adding a second battery. Yeah. Definitely add a second battery, you'd be good to go. If you don't want to go crazy, you could add just a, the small, SPV. S, like a, like a, the SPV line, 
But I personally would go up to the red, <laughs> red line, line, the red line Stinger batteries. You can go to stinger.com, check those out. Yep. They make a couple of small ones that are packed with tons of power. Those are the batteries we like to use. Mm -hmm. um, I know we just we did a couple. Of, what's up, Corey? Uh, exactly. We did a couple of those. And those Mustangs we did, yep. and those worked yep. out super good. And we had a around twenty five hundred. Oh wow, that's a truck. That's a big truck. That's a oh. big truck, man. I thought he's. Oh, and that's a, a diesel. Who? Huh. Well, not necessarily. If twenty five hundred doesn't necessarily mean it's a diesel, it just means no, no, it's no. A bigger he said it's a diesel. Oh, it's a diesel. Yeah, it's diesel. got two batteries. Yeah. And you're to. dimming with twelve hundred, and you have a zero gauge. Huh. Check your ground. Well, no, that's not going to be no. it. Um, damn. Wow. That's a lot. Try this. First off, I would definitely want to see, do you guys like to eat a Tijuana Flats? Hell yes. I love Tijuana Flats. I get no dairy. Anyways, um, gonna send something. To, ta Taco Tuesdays, <laughs> baby. Taco Tuesday is my favorite. Yeah. Um, um, I actually buy the sauce in the bottle from there. Um, the, uh, the, anyways, in the RAM, take your digital <laughs> multimeter and go to the amplifier and see what's going on at the amplifier when the bass is hitting. Maybe you have something going on with the alternator, um, but yeah, I would definitely run in a, 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 okay, that's fine. But go, yeah, bad battery. Bad battery. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Andrew. Um, I would definitely want to see what's going, so put it to DC, <laughs> go into the amplifier, and when you're playing it, see what it's dropping down to. Check it at the amplifier and at the battery, and see, for one, see if there's a huge voltage swing, or just see what the voltage is doing while you're playing it at, you know, when the bass is hitting, see what's going on. Um, that's going to be key to help you figure out what the heck is going on, if there is a bad battery, if it's a bad alternator. Um, and you can also play it, play it with the motor running and with the, without the motor running. Poor connection. Could also be a poor yeah. connection. Mm -hmm. Look at Andrew trying to be helpful. He, he's, uh, he's, he's, he wants to come on the show. So yeah, yeah, okay. So Andrew, it's, it's uh, a mechanic. It's a mechanic. So, it's an yeah. awesome mechanic. Uh, yeah. He's yeah. the guy we always call when we yeah. have those issues yeah. with cars. I always call him. We're going to get him on the show so we can talk about fun stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so definitely, so thing to do, voltage at the battery without the car running, <laughs> voltage at the amplifier without the car running, playing the system, voltage at the battery with the car running, so without and with, get those four measurements, see what the heck is going on, that'll kind of figure that out. Yep. I went with your suggestion with the Kenwood Exelon 6x9 and 7-inch seven seven inch in the, the rear rears. with two P3 Rockfords, ooh, Rockford amps. Awesome, 2018 Silver Rush. Sounds amazing. Nice. Cool. It's good nice. to know that every now and then we know um, what we're talking about. Please tell me if I can get 60 hertz low bass from a Rockford Fosgate Powers. Six and a half split. Uh, yeah. Power series. So here's the deal. Yes and no. You don't necessarily need to get 60 hertz out of it. You just need a good low bass response out of that. If you mount them in a bitching panel, like not, it's got to be about to be a really nice thick panel uh, and the door has to have sound treatment on it a lot of it and then you have to put some obviously acoustic foam like a fast ring or any, anything like that to forcing the sound through mm -hmm. you should have no problem getting them to play extremely low like something like 50 hertz like 60 hertz they're capable of doing it the other thing you just have to keep in mind is what you're playing so like if you're playing something like that hat like if you're playing jazz or rock or something like that it'll play it all day long it'll sound good but as soon as you switch over to hip-hop or anything like that that has exaggerated bass notes you're gonna have to bump up the crossover because 12 dB, 60 hertz is not gonna be enough to stop what that thing is feeding it. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna need to go up to 120. You're still gonna get plenty of bass out of them at 120 if you're playing that music because this is what you're used to playing, this is what it's playing. So when that crossover kicks in, you're still gonna be getting the same amount of sound out of it even though the crossover's up much higher. So something to keep in mind, but remember, Need more cowbells. All right, uh, Pioneer C Series. They are awesome. Uh, they made two types. Uh, so if you can get with the better ones, they're awesome, awesome speakers. And I will say that how I, I like to refer to the Pioneer Zero Series speakers, it is the loudest tweeter on the face of the earth. Dean loved it. Oh my gosh. And they make two series. Yeah. Spend the money, like you said, to get the better one of the two, and then be prepared. Because you're going to watch it, you're going to listen to them like this. And they're gonna be like. And if you Psh! like, if you like symbol, uh, yeah, exactly. It, it makes it, it's the only speaker I know that puts the Rockford T series tweeter to shame. Right, like right there. No, yeah. I, I think it's like really? this is the Z, this is the T, and that's and that's already out of frame. So. And that's the. Um, all right, what's the difference between A B class and a D class? That is a big question. Suffice it to say, it has to do with the way that the amplifier does its output 
So a class D is, is not digital. Um, you have class A, class AB, class D, class G, class H, and it just has to do with the output and how it creates sound. Um, a class AB is gonna have a MOSFET in it, uh, output device that's gonna create half of the sine wave for one side and half of the sine wave for the other side. A class D uses something called pulse width modulation that uses something to create, it, it, it pings up and down like this really fast to create a sine wave and then pings really fast up and down to create the other sine wave. The problem with it is, is that pinging has to happen at a certain speed and that's where you get the noise of a class D amplifier at higher frequencies because a class D amplifier can't move fast enough to create really accurate high frequencies without a lot of processing done on it. What is an AB class amplifier is designed to do that. What that means is that when you have a class D amplifier, you, it, you typically only want to run it at what's rated 4 ohm, unless it's a class D amplifier built to run at 2 ohm that will do 4 ohm. So for example, most class D amplifiers are 4 ohm amplifiers. And there again, there's nothing wrong with class D, like we have some of the Phoenix Gold class D amplifiers over here that will mm -hmm. just freaking kill most AB class amplifiers because they're built really well and they have lots of components and the, the, they're built and they're expensive. That's the thing. Class D amplifiers that are more expensive are gonna sound better like a PDX V9. Personally, one of the best five channel amplifiers on the face of the earth yep. is a class D amplifier. It was built and EQ'd and processed to sound like an amazing amplifier. So don't buy cheap class D, but if you have to, whatever, I understand. Yeah, you, but at least, yeah. if you like, the audio control class D, like the 4.800 that we talk about all the time, it's a class D amplifier. It's designed to work at two ohms, <laughs> ah, that's crazy. so you can run it at two ohms and get perfect sound out of it because that was what it's designed for. Anyway, okay. uh, what, what Christopher, was so Christopher say, I normally don't watch videos without titles. I make an exception for you, so there's no title in the video. No, no, I, it, the title says we'll make it up uh, as we go along. Oh, okay. So okay. because I'm like, what? What happens is, is I, I come up with a silly ya ya title that doesn't mean anything, yeah. and then we start talking, and then there's usually a theme to the show, and then I, when I rebrand it, I come up with that theme, and I go, okay, so that's what we named this. Uh, and there's yeah. that. Bismarck, so, thank you so much. We'll we will send you an email. Uh, and I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Um, pros and cons of 12 inch shallow mount subs in a 98 Silverado. Um, you know, the nice thing about 98 Silverado <laughs> is behind the back seat, that back seat, there's, there's, you can get a pretty decent sized woofer in there. You don't have to do a shallow mount, but if you are gonna do a shallow mount, I would say buy the best shallow mount you can get your hands on. Um, I've put the kicker comps in there, you know, cause so usually people aren't doing, um, no, just the comps. I've actually okay. used just comps. Because they're facing again, it just, no, no, facing down. Okay. They'll work. I mean, it, it, but I mean, I think I've seen some guy put some S types in there at some point too. Personally, the Comp RTs are the way to go, or, you know, it's a little bigger box though, so you okay. can actually get a bigger woofer in there. So you could put something like a Power Series T, uh, T1 shallow mount because you have more airspace. So okay. there's a lot you can do underneath that back seat. 2015 Toyota Honda with the Pioneer 8400 and Idealink Maestro. Steering wheel controls, intermittent working. Ooh, that sucks. Uh, one time will work. Next time I start, car controls won't work, but I restart car and radio controls will work. Any thoughts as to what could be doing the problem? I suspect uh, a bad idea to Maestro RR. Um, Back to me. With okay, so a couple things. Um, it would have to be... What's up, Anthony? So when you're using an iData interface, the R, there's no steering wheel interface. There's no hardwire. It's all done over data. So there's definitely a communication breakdown somewhere between the data and the steering wheel control. So knowing that it's a communication breakdown, I think what I would want to look at also is when the steering wheel controls aren't working, see if like your tire pressure or any of those other things are working as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe what's happening is that that plug on the back is either pinched because they're really thin wires, or it's getting pulled and not making a good connection. So if the only thing that's not working is steering wheel control, then we know that it's probably something wrong with the RR. If nothing is working when the steering wheel controls don't work, that might mean it's just that cable between the RR and the radio might be having some issues. So I would check that and see how that works All for right. you. Okay, so let's see. Right here. Sony amplifier, DSP is amazing amplifier. Oh, it's Derek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, six channel configure can work six channels down. To, okay. I haven't got one of those yet, say, uh, one of those amps yet. I guess I should order one of those. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so when you make a custom box, 
Isn't it wasted to use a Jeep woofer? No. I mean, I've, I've built... It's Anthony, too. What's hey, up, Anthony? Yeah, that's, uh, I say Anthony. She say, yeah, hi, guys. Anyway. By the way, Porsche tip the other day? Porsche tip? That was him, right? No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no that was uh, Johnny. That was Johnny. Johnny. Oh, sorry. That was Johnny. Sorry. Your face yeah. is very similar. Yeah. Um, so, anyways. No. So... Uh, even though I don't build boxes now, in a former life, as you guys might know, I, I built boxes all the time. And yeah, custom boxes, that's all you build. Built, built, built. Now, there again, your time is worth something. So buying a box that has been pre-manufactured to put in your car for a cheap woofer, is it worth it? it? Depends on what your time is and how much money you have. You know, I guess the thought would be if you're spending 70 or $80 on a woofer to spend $35 on a box, might make sense because building the box yourself is gonna cost you more than the cost of the woofer. There again, it just depends on what you're trying to do and what you feel. Like some guys, like myself for many things, I, it's not the price of something, it's just the knowing that I did it. So if I wanna spend $100 to build a box for a $70 woofer, I did it, it's mine. I controlled its outcome I, right. and I'm happy. It's like, look what I did. Take that. Yeah. So that's really what it comes down to. Um, yeah, check the can connection. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, those are the one plugs. Check. So, yeah, yeah. But that's. Um, all right. Um, uh, so, anyways. Uh, shop question. Uh, adding a sub amp only <laughs> door speakers are a full range, draft left and right, or a single speaker? Okay, I don't know. What, what is it? I, I, I don't know. Right here. <laughs> uh, shop question. Adding a sub amp only door speaker. Are all full range, range, grab left and right, or single speaker? Um, I'm going to grab a single speaker, and I'm probably gonna grab one of the rear speakers. If they're all full range, I'm grabbing the rear speaker. Most decks, especially factory, the sub output, it's not gonna matter whether I've, I've picked these two, or I've picked those two, or I've picked these two. The, that frequency is, is usually minimal at best, and it's not anything that they've, <coughs> they've took any effort into. Grab the one that's closest and go from there and you'll be fine. All right, is the RR updated? I run into a few issues where what? Intimate? Issues where intermittent issues are solved. Oh, good question. Yeah, that's also, I, he was re replying to the other thing where the steering wheel controls weren't working. Okay. Check the, the software. If you take your RR out and you plug it back in your computer and the top where it says the, the, um, the, the model number and all that, I'll show you the current flash on that. You can go and check to see if there's an updated version because they're always updating the software. That's one of the cool things about the RR is that it's continuously updatable. So if a problem like that is an issue, let's say you got it a year ago, they might have new software available for it and you can update it and that will fix that issue. So yes, very helpful, thank you. So that's something else to check on the RR too. Ah, uh, you're all fuzz gay. <sighs> Custom boxes you build in were sweet. Oh, okay. Lots of good old fashioned cool. old school touches. Yeah. Well, back then they weren't old school though, that's the thing. They were kind of new school. Now they're old school, but yeah. Um, if the bog meets spec for a woofer, who cares? Exactly, Robert, and that's that's my point. You know, that's the nice thing about using a company like A-Trend where they do make boxes that are spec'd out for the most part. Big D Wiz is here. Uh, any shallow mount woofers you guys like? Pioneer versus Kenwood versus any other. I so like when it comes to shallow mount woofers, Derek, uh, we strictly recommend uh, the comp, uh, the Kicker Comp RT. Kicker Comp RT, yep. and our world is going to be it for the that price point. That is going to be the best, what we consider the best shell amount woofer. Yep. Now, in that same breath, Phoenix Gold just came out with a new MX series yep. shell so amount woofer, which we haven't had a chance to play with it yet. It looks really, really nice. Mm -hmm. um, which we're going to put one in Butch's truck here soon. Yep. Um, if you have the money. The Rockford T110 mm -hmm. in a ported God. box yes. is phenomenal. Yes. You do need the grill because you're going to downfire it. And, and it's one of those. So there's two categories of shallow mount woofers. There's a shallow mount woofer that's a true shallow mount woofer, meaning that it's shallow this way inside magnet structure and it's shallow the other way, meaning what sticks out. And then you have the not so true shallow mount woofer, which is shallow, kind of shallow into the box, but <laughs> what they've made up for here, they put on the outside of the speaker. Mm -hmm. The T1 is that style woofer. The Scar is also that style woofer, where you know you have the front of the driver is you know two and a half inches. Yep. That's yep. not really a shallow mount driver. Yeah, they're over there. It's on the bottom. Um, it's really not a shallow mount driver if you need two inches on the front of it. Yeah. So 
No. They do make grills for them, so it, and it's a two-inch grill. You put the grill on, then you can literally set the woofer on the carpet, which is what you do if you had a Fox box, and it sounds freaking amazing. All right, somebody say uh, good amplifier for uh, 212. Uh, I well, just pulled that one yep. out of the woodwork, huh? We and also have that, that MX 800.1 over there. You could grab <laughs> no, that like too. you got a kicker. You can grab this one. That's the 80 uh, 800.1 KXA. Awesome. Now the really nice thing about those amplifiers, even though know, we haven't done a video on them, I feel really bad about that. You cannot imagine, and that's that's my that's as sincere as you guys will ever see. Yep. Um, that has what we're going to call the uh, distortion detector software built into it, yeah. and. And there again, there's no copyright on the words distortion detecting built into what it. And it also has a harmonic restoration for the subwoofer, aka mm -hmm. Epa, Epa Earthquake Center, um, center of the earthquake where the earthquake starts from. It has very similar harmonic restoration built into it, just like those. So there's two things in there that are freaking amazing, and it has subwoofer volume. Yep. Uh, thanks, peeps. Asked me about them, and I figured you guys tried several. I'll pass the info along. Yeah. No problem. That's B3, what we're here for. B3 Shallows, they are amazing too. Yes. No, no, you, yes. you have my number. You can actually just. Cool. Derek. Oh, like, okay. you, can, you can just call me. Everyone else does. That's, that's why I'm here. What's um, going on? Uh, powering an L7 15 inch Q series. Ooh. Ooh. I felt like I was just in a uh, Toy Story movie there. We're the green aliens. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, have you tried the Q-Series amplifiers? They're yes. freaking amazing. Of course, that amplifier that I just showed you from Kicker is also amazing. Now, if you're like, I got a Kicker woofer, I don't necessarily need a Kicker amplifier. That's totally understandable. There's plenty of big amplifiers out there. One that pops in my head right now that we use a lot of is the Audio Control LC uh, 1.800. Oh, so now they have the 1500. They also have a 1500. You but I don't crazy. think you need a 1500 for that. But um, and then also, if you wanted to go like I got that woofer at a really good price, and I want to kind of like scale the the amplifier price down a little bit, they also have the CS 1800.1 now and a 1200.1 that are like reasonably priced. Uh, we had that guy ask earlier about the XR 1001 from Kenwood, also a very nice yeah. thing. Um, epicenter, I said it. Yep. There you uh, go. Uh, uh, Quentin, if you can type your question again, because it's like it's a lot of question. It's hard uh, for us to go back. Like right? if you ever watch the show on Tuesday, in the little bottom of the corner where we show the comments flying by, that's yeah. that's what it looks like. It, it's worse. Um, so there was a question here. Hold on. What's what size? Where did it go? Exactly. Oh, that's it, what I said. It was it was the size of speaker wire. Um, dang it. Hey, uh huh. See. Yeah. Uh, uh okay, oh, wait, there wait, 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 it was. What gauge? Yeah, did you see it? Dude, yeah. Did you, uh, what gauge speaker wire you usually use, use for, for a 16 watt sub? 12 gauge. 12 gauge. So basically, what we have is we carry three different sizes of speaker wires. We carry 12, 16, and 10. Um, anything that, anytime we want an amp underneath the seat, as long as it's um, under 1,000 watts, which most of the time it is way under 1,000 watts, mm -hmm. uh, we're on a 12 gauge. Uh, if it's two runs of power wire, run two 12 gauge or two 16 gauge, depending there again if it's under that. And then if we're doing the big, the big amps, <clears throat> then we run a 10 gauge. Um, and then every now and then we'll do something that's really big. But usually by the time the amplifiers are that big, they're mounting in the back by the subwoofer, so there again it'll just get 10 gauge. Uh, every now and then we'll run a dual 8 gauge. So it yeah. just depends on what we're doing. The one thing I tell you about wire size, you can never run too small. I'm sorry, too big of a wire. Uh, don't ever feel like, oh man, I, I never look at the minimum. I always look at what I can do. No, he haven't drink iced tea yet. Um, all right, so I'm Thomas, just high on uh, it's it's exactly what uh, Joaquin said. Honestly, said. this is the best part of the day. Yeah, I mean, you got to be honest with yeah. this. Yeah, is, yeah, this is like the most, this is, interact this with This is you. like the yeah. best part of our day today. Yeah, and uh, so yeah. Uh, um, all right, so yeah. DSP, you have a lot of shoes. Sony, Brax, to... or Helix. Those are like three of the best DSP, yes. that, you know, right yes. there. Yeah. And, and that falls in that category. Could, well, pick one, because I mean, and they're what all are you good. trying to do? You, you can know? go. Okay, so you can go and check the DSR one that we did the video. Uh, the Alpine. Yeah. Well, I mean, those are those are just the common. So ones you that we at have. least can have an um, idea of have, what are you trying yeah, to do. You have bits. Um, oh yeah. You have, you know, like when you have DSP built you into got the Q the key series key, amplifier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you got Arc, Phoenix Gold. Arc makes makes a really Audio nice control. DSP. Oh my God! So yeah. <clears throat> here's the deal. Let's 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 table this and we'll. And, and then you got the date and audio. Way to go, Wayne. Yeah, that was good. Uh, that was like good. That. All right, I, like I, 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 I got to remember Wayne. Um, so here's what you do when you're looking at a DSP. Yeah. You download the software to either your Windows or Mac machine because that's important. 
That is super important. If you're a Mac user like me, having to bust out something that doesn't work on my computer totally sucks. So I have to have a separate computer to work my DSP. That might be a problem. Now, if you're a Windows user, you're good. Every pro every one software works on your computer, yay. In that case, what you wanna do is you wanna to go to their website, you wanna download their software, and you wanna start playing with it because all of them have a demo mode. And that demo mode will allow you to figure out what makes sense to you. Meaning, is this is this make sense? You know, Sa Carlos. fake set up a system. Screw around with it, play with the EQ, play with the time correction, figure out how to do everything. So by the time you spend the thousand bucks on one of those processors, you know what you're getting into. Nothing sucks worse than spending that much money on something and being like, <laughs> uh, you know, like we have the Kicker Q class uh, 1005 over there, which mm -hmm. if God willing, I will get to that, that video this week. Um, it's Hopefully. Plan. Uh, it's software is really cool. It's very intuitive. It's easy to use. Now, we also have another amplifier coming in later this week, which I'm super excited about, which is the Forza. Um, and so we've been playing with that software. Because um, yep. for me, I'm more into the, the DSP amplifiers because I feel like that is kind of more doable, I, I guess it would be, because why not just get it over with? Um, and there again, like the only one of those that you can't play with that kind of bums me out is Kicker makes the DSP 612, the six, 606. You can't play with their software. Totally sucks. But it's really nice. So, yeah. Uh, you guys provide a static service to the community. Thanks for taking time out of your day to engage with the peeps. This is the best hey, part of the day, like we yeah. said, Derek. This is yep. what we live this for. Is, so, yep. um, you know. For the whole day, man. Uh, uh, right here, hang on. Um, yeah. I heard the new Zabco DSP is great. It is. Right there again. It's I have a Rockford T2500. Can I put two HEC Orions on it? As long as you keep the ohm load right, yeah. Okay. It's always, you remember. Orion fan? I, I'm, a, I'm a big Orion fan, I, but I really would rather have that 2501 because <laughs> those meters are freaking cool. Um, so, you know, there again, it's 2500 watts, What's about 3000 watts of max power. So as long as the subwoofers are big enough or small enough what to up, handle Mel? that amplifier, you should be fine. Hey, um, from Bolivia. But power is key. What's up, Kios? What's up, Mel? Power is key. If you're going to have that 2500, you have to have batteries or one big battery with the exception of the one that starts the car because it's 3000 watts of like no nonsense power. You yeah, got to have power. Zero gauge. Test tape needs to sponsor the show. I'm just happy that Stinger or Amp finally sells test tape because we yeah. were having to get like like rolls and rolls of it sideways, which was just a pain in the butt. Yeah, so yeah. I, um, I was thinking zip ties need to sponsor the show, <laughs> but you know whatever works for you. Um, oh, good evening, what's up, Peter? Uh, what's up? Your work is really good. Well, thank you, John. Um, and your comments are very nice. Uh, what high amperage battery do you recommend over 60? So when it comes to batteries, there again we use the Stinger batteries. Yep. So you can go to stinger.com and you can check out their batteries. I prefer the red tops. They have about 15 different red tops. Somewhere right in the middle are usually where we're going. Um, and they, they make one that's... It's, they have the it's, specifications it's and this, everything. about yeah. this big, whatever size that is. I'm not 6'2", so that's, that's about uh, 7 or 8 inches square-ish. Um, check that one out. I don't know the model number off the top of my head. I probably should. But, you know, it's filled with other nonsense. Alpine Type X 6x9s or Kenwood 6x9 components set. Uh, the ones from the car, uh, the ones I can go through active on. Ooh, through active. Okay. Mm, that's a tough one. Okay, because like the through, okay. <clears throat> I knew this question was going to come up at some point. If you're trying to do those, those Kenwood components and go through it active. If you're not going crazy on the power, like you're doing like 70 by six, um, or like something like that, and you got some form of processor DSP, it's gonna be a fun little project, okay? Um, it's gonna sound great. However, with the X-Type, you can run like 150 watts to them yeah. and, and, and get really, really loud. So it's where it kind of, gonna depend on what you want to do there if you just want cool imaging and be able to do that then definitely do the three-way set it's way more fun yeah um, but if you're just trying to go loud and then just make this stuff work because that tweeter on that X type is is huge so it plays really low and can sound really good with some power mm -hmm. so it's a tough call because yeah. there again the tweeter on that is like that big yeah. so um, um, we're gonna be here tomorrow 
A uh, little, uh, little issue. Yeah, well, always, yeah, it's yeah. the ANs and Y, right? Um, <laughs> little issue to the power thing. The rated power rarely are going to happen with music. That's because the progressive music signal that is like never the max level, level amplitude. Max. Mike, Mike, Miko, Michael, Michael um, you're correct. And, and that's actually funny you should bring that up because we're doing a lot of behind the scenes work on that so we can better show you that. Like, Trying to explain that to somebody is the equivalent of just setting their hair on fire and their head <coughs> explodes. So we're, we're actually working on that specific topic right now and hopefully something will come of that and we'll be able to share that with you as we go forward in a later video. But yes, that, that is true. Um, All right. We'll uh, table that. Will yeah. a 7 inch fit a 2007 ion door? 2007, oof. I don't know. I'm gonna go no. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say no, man. I'm gonna go no. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, you can make okay, it. Okay, there again. Okay. If it uses, like, okay, do this. So go on to uh, packdashaudio.com or Metro Online, doesn't matter, and type in your car. There should be a speaker <coughs> space. If there's right. a speaker spacer that's available for your car, meaning a speaker adapter like those bags that are normally in frame, they're out of frame right now. If they make one for your car, compare it to the GM. If it's the same, like the pickup truck or any other, if it's the same one, yes. If it's nothing, I'm gonna go no. Okay. Okay, so did you say the Alpine is facing out the PDX-V9? What? Uh, no. Okay, so here's what we said. Yes, they are phasing out the PDX-V9. However, uh -huh. according to Alpine, when we were at Knowledge Fest and we were talking to our guy there, um, they're still making them. They're still making it. Because People are still buying them. Yeah. So uh, it's one of those rare instances where Alpine isn't being stupid um, and they're still making something even though it's not in the lineup anymore. People are asking <laughs> for it, so they're making it. But that's what's... It's eventually going to go away because at some point they're just going to be like, the contract is up, they can't make them anymore, too bad, so sad. It's not in any of the pictures, so people are just going to forget about it and that's kind of what they're hoping for. So mm -hmm. the amplifier is going away. That's that. All right. Uh, I'm going to say, I've been full call user for years, seriously considering to the Kenwood three way set you put in the Dodge Ram. Do you think I will be impressed, impressed so, versus the full call components? No. And what I would suggest you do, <laughs> um, and it, it, Focal is an amazing speaker, and we love them dearly, yep. as, as we all know. Yep. There's another company that Orca, which is the company that distributes Focal in the United States, owns. It's called Illusion. Like yeah. smoke and mirrors, illusion. Now, if you saw the show where we had Nick Wingate sitting between us and he was talking about how he won the Iaska World Championship with his truck, he had a set of illusion three and a halfs in his dash. Okay, so I'm gonna say they are the most amazing sounding bi ampable, meaning that's an external crossover, so it's technically a mid range and a tweeter, so it's a true component yeah. mounted as a. Uh, it's a true yes. separate mounted as a component. There Perfect. we go. Perfect. Um, but check out the Illusion Audio 3.5. Now, it, I, it's been brought to my attention that the other amazing 3.5, just like that, is also the Audio Frog. So if you want that, the reason why I brought up the Illusion is because, there again, you talked about <coughs> Focal. So what he ran in his truck was a set of Focal Flax 6.5 inch mid bass in the door and a set of Illusion Audio 3.5 in, the, in, the, in dash. the front. So if you want that same Focal goodness and you're willing to spend the money, which I'm assuming you are because you like Focal, that might be something to think about. And now, the model number are the CX3s. That's right, Mel. Yes. 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 So there we go. Um, something to think about. Uh, my door panel. My door panels need, need more mass. mass. Uh, check uh, a multiple, stinger. Multiple layers of roadkill. Yeah, a stinger. Uh, multiple layers of. Uh, or unless you're talking. Ultimate. Or, or unless you're talking about um, uh, or, uh, Orca uh, uh, does BAM. Black hole. The BAM, the black hole stuff. Black Ooh, hole. Black hole. Yeah. There again, go to go to Orca and or Google black hole sound dampening or sound treatment or something yeah. like that. They make stuff like that that'll add mass. Mm -hmm. Audio Frog. Audio Frog is a brand. Yep. Uh, you can Google it. Uh, yep. Let me show you their logo. <clears throat> it's an amazing brand too. Yep. It's owned by Andy. It's owned by uh, Andy. So if you guys, uh, this is this is the Audio Frog label right here. This is their uh, RTA kit that they sell. If any of you guys are interested in getting into the wonderful world of RTA to tune your car, 
you can buy this kit right here. It comes with probably one of the best audio CDs you'll ever find for testing. Um, the songs on this are incredible. Honestly, it was worth the 200 bucks just for the CD, not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also get the mic and all the components to add it into your computer. And Andy has some of the most amazing tech support ever. You can also go to audiofrog. So that brings up an interesting point. So um, not to, to veer off, but um, so one of the things I was thinking about yesterday while I was, um, does Illusion have external crossovers? Yes. yes. Um, one of the things I was thinking about yesterday while I was running was what we're going to add to DNF tool drawer is a resource page. Because we often talk about resources and then we have no way for them. We just say go here to kicker and, and go to the... Okay, so okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to add resource links to all of... To, to there. So when we talk about something, we can say go to DNF tool. It's not up yet. Relax. i got to build it. So it'll be this <laughs> weekend or something before I build it. Yeah. But I'm going to make a resource page on the DNF tool drawer so that we can put all the stuff like things that you guys mentioned that we might forget about. But like Audio Frog... And when you go there, they have a resource page, and that resource page is filled with white papers on DSP and EQ and all that stuff. Because this guy, that's what he's known for. Yep. Um, so it's all there. All you gotta do is read it. I know reading sucks, apparently, um, but it's there. So I, we, I figured we'd put up a resource page. Anyway, all right. Okay, on that. hang on. I have this one that he actually typed twice. And okay, I good. Wanna, all right. Uh, 9903, CT sounds, meso components, SCAR audio, uh, five channel amp, front cuts out sometimes, no matter volume setting, usually comes back on in a few seconds. Oh, okay, so there's a few obvious things that it could be. Obviously, you know, digital multimeter first. <laughs> Anytime we talk about troubleshooting an amplifier, we need a digital multimeter. Mm -hmm. Usually when something comes out, okay, so there's a couple basic things that cause an amplifier to shut off. Now, the fact that it's just the front's cutting off makes things weird, mm -hmm. but let's move it along, just play, play along. So first thing that's gonna cut an amplifier off is improper ventilation. I mean, the amplifier is getting too hot, shutting off. Now, different things can cause that, but that is one thing to take into consideration. Probably not your problem. Resistance, which is one of the things that causes the amplifier to get hot, meaning you have an improper ohm load, either from a short or a, let's say it's running two ohm or one ohm instead of four ohm, uh, that will cause an amplifier to shut off. And then the third thing that causes an amplifier to shut off is improper voltage, meaning it's not getting enough voltage, either input or output, meaning it's getting too much signal voltage or it's not getting enough battery voltage. So that's why we kind of group those into voltage because really it should be four things, but mm -hmm. voltage is voltage. Right. So that falls into voltage. Okay. okay, so now what we need to do is we need to figure out why they're cutting off. The easiest thing to do to figure out why they're cutting off is to disconnect them, meaning take them off the amplifier. Uh, if the fronts are cutting out, disconnect the fronts and put the rears on the front, meaning just unscrew those four speaker wires, put the rears on the front and start playing it, the front, the rear speakers only, and see if they cut out. That'll help to tell you, is my amplifier bad or is it my speakers might be bad. Now, if the rears come on and they don't cut out at all, all right, so then we know that it's not the amplifier. We know it's probably going to be a bad speaker. At that point, put the rears back on the rears and just plug in one speaker and see if one speaker one plays. One at a time, yeah. Okay, if that speaker causes the issue, disconnect that speaker, put the other speaker on. If that speaker causes the issue, well then you know you got two bad speakers, but if only one speaker's doing it, then you have one bad speaker. Now the other thing you can do too is flip the speakers. That's something we do a lot of the times too, is where we'll take the front speakers, put them on the rear, the rear speakers, put them on the front. If the rears, and then if, it starts cutting out, we know it's the speakers because we're on a totally different set of channels and the rears are still not cutting out, which would have been the front. So swapping things around. Now, the other thing you can do too is you have your digital multimeter. Meter the speakers, figure out what is ohm load. So if you meter a speaker and it's somewhere around four ohms and you meter the other one and it, and it kind of matches, like matches, then mm -hmm. they're probably both good. But if one is like, let's say 3.8 and the other one is 3.4, the one that's 3.4 is probably bad. Um, but that's kind of where you need to start. Obviously, we're going to assume that your ground on your amplifier is good, your power is good. Test those, like we talked about earlier in the show. If you didn't catch that, go back and watch that. We talked about testing the voltage at the amplifier, uh, DC voltage. Uh, you can also, yeah, so there you go. What's up? Uh, What's up? I plan to drive 16 hours. Oh, gosh. Oh, he said oh. uh, because the work and everything, so oh. keep it going. So thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Make sure you make, make sure if, before you drive down make 16 hours, make an appointment. Yes. Because appointments are key. Uh, uh, today we had this guy that just drive, just yeah, drive he was down from, from New York. New York. And luckily, he just wanted to say hi because yes. he wanted. He was like, and I was like, no. Um, yep. Hey, how you doing? Hey. Uh, okay, so saw your Instagram of the old school 1999 JL audio amp install. 
uh, when did 1990 become old school? Um, yeah, trust me, I understand. I mean, you know, but it is. It's unfortunate. You know, really what it comes down to, actually, you know, it's funny, 1999 was the year Haley was born, so technically I guess she'd be old school. Old school. <laughs> It's 20 years that old, you're old school. That's, that's like awesome. the guy came in, he got a 20 year old car. Uh, check for shorts and grounds on the speakers. And that would be what the meter would be for too. Uh, which brings up, okay, how do you check for shorts and grounds? Set your meter to continuity or ohm, and then make sure they're both disconnected. Make sure to take both speaker wires off. Put your, take your meter, go to one speaker lead, and go to ground and see if you get anything. If you get any movement on that meter, that speaker's shorted out. Now, it could still play and be shorted out because what can happen sometimes too is the voice coil or the speaker <coughs> itself basket can be shorted to the frame which when you screw it into metal causes an issue. The speaker would be perfectly fine holding your hand, do all your neat stuff, but the speaker is still shorted out. That was what happened to James uh, in New Zealand when he had a bad Rockford woofer and it blew up yep, his T-1005. Yep. Mm -hmm. I remember. Uh, if you had an amp sitting on the bench that wasn't connected to the car, the woofer played all the time, but the basket, uh, the frame of the woofer was shorted to the voice coil and bad things happen. All right, will you do a full audio setup in a semi truck? Could you? Yeah, would I? Yes. I mean, yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're driving the thing, I mean, like, we have that, we have that yeah, one guy yeah, that yeah, stops by every yeah. six months because, and it's disgusting. No offense if you watch, I'm sorry, but it's like things are It's growing. a lot of stuff, you know, like, uh, anyway. Uh, it's uh, gross. But anyway, yeah. But yeah, no, I would, why would that. you not? I mean, I mean, you can get imaging. You, if you have speaker locations and you appreciate good sound, and you've got lots of room, go oh, to yeah. town, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, could you imagine some really cool A-pillars made in a semi with like a six, you know, like a, like a three-way set up the A-pillars in a semi? Oh, that, that would be, would be that so would be. cool. Um, right but yeah, you wouldn't be the yeah. first guy to do it for sure. But yes, there's no reason. It, there again, it comes down to your budget, man. It comes down to your old school state of mind. No rules. <laughs> there you go. For yeah. sure. Mr. Old School himself. Officially, uh, you're an antique. <laughs> officially, you're an antique. I feel like an antique. Some yeah. days, dude. Yeah, you so, are. Dude, let me tell you what, man. When I take off running right now, it's like that for that first mile, it's like, why am I doing this? And then it kind of just goes to a low pain in the background. And it's like, okay, I, I can make do, but... Yeah, but you're still yes. running when it's like no, of course. hurting. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, well, because yeah, I'm stupid like that. Yeah. Hey, it's Ada. What's up? What's He's up, late. man? It's okay, How are man. You? We missed you. Um, <coughs> we do a fair few of semis. So there you go. Up at Stereo Kings in Oregon, they do a fair amount of semis. You do semis there, Ada? Um, uh, do you charge extra to do. Wait, yeah, what? Video, do, no. Um, like you see the truck show kick at, okay. No, so basically what happens with, with the install diaries is we, we try to film, so we have, a, we have a, we have a whole bunch of videos. Like if you call the video today, you saw it was much heavier and that was because we filmed that in 2018. We, we usually film a whole block of videos and then we supplement those with things in and out. That's meaning something will come in and we know we have to get that on footage because it's a question you guys have been asking or it's a product that just came out and we want to specialize that like the uh, like the Kenwood uh, components. Um, not many semis. That's why you should do one then. Um, <laughs> so, uh, remember my element this past weekend? Yes, exactly. yes, exactly. Um, so we, we have cars that come in and out that we've, we try to record and so sometimes People ask, hey, are you filming today? Can you record? And we'll be like, uh, yeah, we're, we're filming today. Like, there was a car the other day we really wanted to film, but then we realized we were, like, on the clock. Like, we, we yeah. literally had, because like... Because filming, filming, I'm takes, sorry, filming takes... It adds extra time to it. So, yeah. um, not much, because we've, we've got it to a really good thing, but then, like... It still, it takes time. It takes time. Yeah. And, and when we're on the clock, like... Most of, the, most of the big jobs that we film take, uh, like for a prime example, the Camaro, the four days of, of the motion picture that was the Camaro. Yeah. That took two days to do that install. So <laughs> it's okay to film that because we have lots of time to get in there and talk about it and, and, and explain everything we're doing. Um, but in some cases like this one, we really wanted to film because it would have made an awesome 911. We didn't have the time to, to spend on it like we wanted to. So yeah. it was like, uh, but it just comes down to the schedule. Um, <laughs> I don't. And I, yeah, we do a lot of super, suburb, su Subarus. Yeah, that. Uh, um, yeah. We do a lot of Jeeps and F-150s. Uh, I did a lot of summers back in the day. I drive one now. Yeah, there exactly. Trucker. That's right. Forgot. That was your that was your name back in the day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> alternate Fat Dean was, yeah, okay, Skinny Dean posting it. It screws up your brain. Uh -huh. Hey, trust me, when yeah. I'm editing it, I'm, I'm, it screws up my brain too. I'm like, ah. Oh. 
Yeah. Oh my God, who's this guy? Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Go, I, was, I was literally this morning. As I'm sitting there eating like, ice cream, going, "Wow, Whoa. look at that guy! Oh, this is good ice cream." Uh-huh. I'm gonna go have to run another mile. Crap. <laughs> um, you like in the bathroom? I'm putting, uh, see, I'm putting a system in a semi in a few weeks. Well, there you go. Uh, what is the average hour rate in the car audio industry? Honestly, it just it's regional. It's extreme. Hourly rate is extremely regional. And there again, it's it's not necessarily hourly rate. Some people charge by the job, meaning what you're having done. Mm-hmm. Um, but to in there again, like an hourly rate varies even in like this location where we're at. Because in this location, there's five or six other stereo shops oh God, within Lord. like spitting distance. Yeah. Um, and they're all different because like we got a couple of shops that'll charge you like more than we do and, and we those are some of the shops making our 911 videos um, and then there's shops <laughs> exactly. that charge a lot less than us and there again those are the shops that make it into our videos uh, add in Maryland it's 120 bucks um, which is there again it's a little higher than here so but there again it's Washington so you know that's that's you know no, it's there again uh, Canada's 120. Um, honestly, it might be that here. I don't. I don't pay attention I, to it. I know no. what we. <sighs> there again, Paul breaks it down not into hourly so much as into the job. So yeah. uh, it, it gets really weird, um, but fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you guys? Do you have local shops that you fix? You have to fix. Yes. Yes. We have, yes uh, actually, yes. that's why all you guys, the, some, all the nine one one stuff. Some of the nine one one stuff because um, you know a lot of yeah. customers doing themselves. Okay. But yes. Um, I did a lot of Chevy, uh, Chevy celebrities. <laughs> With what? <laughs> With, With three, three? speakers. Oh yeah, uh, three spoke rims back in the day. Yeah, baby, oh, like wow. that. Uh, Finland has about the same. So there you go. Um, dang, that's RV rates. Yeah, <laughs> oh it is. I mean, you know, but the thing of it is, is good shops are. Uh, we all have those shops. Uh, yeah, yeah, we do. Um, but, but there again, you know. And that's always what we try to, to try to hammer in is that do your research on your shop. If you're going to spend the money, make sure you're spending it at the place you want to do. Yep. I understand it's hard, um, and, and, and and shops don't always do a really good job of promoting themselves. Uh, <laughs> out of here with Ethan um, from uh, Soundwave Sound and, and uh, uh, Virginia Virginia Beach um, at Knowledge <laughs> Fest and at the DAS show teach a class on trying to get these guys to use Facebook because Facebook believe it or not if you're not on Facebook which you guys are all on Facebook obviously is one of the places where a lot of car stereo shops spend their time because we realize we're going after that demographics that still use Facebook so yeah. mm-hmm. that is that is a great place to go but there again it always is amazing that it's like they don't use it all the time and it's a shame because you're losing customers because that's where people are going to find you and if you don't have cool pictures up there and and all this other information then you're not gonna find it so we can understand why you can you don't always find the shops that you need um, what's up Ada okay from Anthony um, uh, what did I say, Ada? oh they're just having fun uh, okay cut race pricing <laughs> I spend more time on Instagram, and I do too. Yes, and it's, yes, and there again, when I think of a Instagram, lot of people, yep. I, I think of Facebook because they own the two, and anything I put on Instagram automatically goes up to my Facebook page. So yeah, Instagram is definitely if I'm looking for something is where I always start because I'm I want to my eyes want to be tantalized, and I like tantalized. Oh, headed to Mobile Solutions. How is it you get to go to Mobile Solutions, but you've never been to... You don't get to go to Knowledge Fest. I don't understand that. What? That doesn't make any sense. Really? Yeah, I would much rather go to Knowledge Fest. I mean, don't get me wrong. No, no, I probably no, want to I do everything. Like to go to Mobile Solutions uh, too, what but... does that say? Everyone has to step up their game because of your social media. Well, I mean, there again. Uh, social media, you got you got to spend time yeah. on it. Um, and it, way too much, apparently. But, hey! Whatever. Yep. We're here on Facebook. We had a good time tonight. It Thank was you. really great. Thank you guys so much for coming out. As always, DNF Tool Drawer is a place where you can find cool tools like the ones we use in our videos. Yep. And hey, you know, pretty soon we'll have the resources page up there. And don't forget, this Sunday, this we're going to be This Sunday, we're going to be here. So Sabi. pause it, watch yep. it again. We'll be there. Uh, Patreon is a place you can go to support the show, and then you get your name at the beginning of the show for the rebroadcast tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Teespring <laughs> slash store slash five stars place you can go to get cool shirts like these or better shirts There's like eight shirts up there. So there's a lot yeah. of cool stuff up there. Yeah, um, patron boring life Dean Haley. Yep. I'll just leave it at that and also 
Uh, don't forget, if you're watching this and you're on YouTube, leave a comment. You'll get eligible for us to do the random picking, meaning you don't have to do anything other than comment, and we're just going to randomly pick someone either from this show or that show once a week to yep. win one of those. Lots of fun there. Hey, you guys have a great night as always. We will see. That's okay. You can rewatch it tomorrow or rewatch it here. You're already on Facebook. Uh, oh, maybe I'll probably... be in Florida too. Okay, cool. Exactly. Um, so there we go. You guys have a wonderful week. We'll see you back here on Saturday at 6 o'clock. Lots of fun. Be safe. Make it till Saturday. Make we'll it see then. you then. Yeah, have I a good can. time. <laughs> Bye.